I am Andrea Navarro and I'm going to present for paper titled Mobile Driven Development Inclusion of Navigational, Structural and Role Based Access Control Elements for Java Server Spaces and ASP.NET Model View Controller Frameworks in UML Models. A short title with no abbreviations. This is part of the dissertation of Humberto Cortez. He has been unable to be here today and I'm going to present his work. Okay, I'm going to try to make a, a brief presentation. First of all, I'm going to talk about the motivation. And I'm going to present two meta models that we have defined, extending a previously defined meta model, and how we have translated these meta models into two UML profiles. It has been a very direct, straightforward translation, so I'm going to be extremely brief in this, in this, in, in this part. And I'm going to present how we have applied our meta models uh, during the design of a learning tool that we have called uh, OLA G2 DE. And finally, I'm going to present the conclusions and future work. Okay, motivation. Uh, in our research group, we have realized that educational applications are becoming very complex enterprise applications. Which are enterprise applications? Uh, Martin Fowler uh, gave us uh, some, some lines about what enterprise applications are. These applications have persistent data and a lot of persistent data, huge data in the resource tile. There is concurrent access to this data through a lot of user interface screen. This application has to be integrated with other enterprise applications and there is a conceptual dissonance within data. This is of this conceptual dissonance. Okay, we have to integrate a bank application with an insurance company application. We can have the concept of client, customer, but the customer can be very different for a bank than for an insurance company. So there is a dissonance among the same data. And we have complex business logic and what Fowler calls e-logic because there are very both uh, business rules that have to be implemented in the application. Okay, enterprise application, define factorials, the client application which access to the application, the presentation tier that provides a user interface for uh, human clients, the business logic tier which are the business rule, the implementation of the business rule, the integration tier, that is a dirty tier for data access, and the resource tier, an external tier, where the data lives. Well, if we consider two of the most prominent enterprise frameworks for representation tier, we can find Oracle, Java Server Faces, and Microsoft ASP.NET Model View Controller. And we have found, we have found <coughs> important drawbacks in the existing uh, modeling notation in order to make designs uh, application built using this framework. Which uh, approaches can we find for the modeling of this type of application? Well, we have classified it into two main groups, modeling oriented and low code oriented. Regarding modeling oriented, we have a UML web application extension made by Conalin uh, in 1999. That is a very good notation for the characterization of the presentation tire of web application but uh, it is not enough to characterize the most modern uh, elements that have appeared in the present enterprise framework. We have the interaction for modern language that uh, all it is defined as UML profile, it defines 75 new stereotypes, so it's not an UML related notation. Okay, you can do an UML model if you want using uh, IFML, but in practice their designs are not UML oriented designs. And we have a huge group of notations based on the relationship management methodology, that is an old methodology provided by Isakovich in 1995, which mainly defines some access primitives for the domain represented using class or entity relationship diagrams. I have a lot of and we have found not very, uh, not very uh, 
switchable in order to characterize enterprise application with huge amount of business logic elements. And we have some kind of tools that we can call them low-code oriented tools that are intended to, to build, to make a fast development of web application using soft time of visual notation. But we cannot say that these are modeling diagrams, uh, visual elements that did this application provide. So we just wanted something very simple, okay? We wanted a simple UML extension to characterize the presentation tile of enterprise application. So we have extended UML uh, web application extension for data server faces and uh, ASP.NET uh, model view controller. So we have defined two lightweight profiles for this application for the presentation tire, and in the rest of tires, plain UML can be used with any problem, thus any multi-tire and security partner can be used in simple UML design. Our models are platform-specific models, therefore they can, they can be translated into code directly, manually. Okay, we have provided an automatic machinery in order to make the translation, but if someone uh, doesn't want to be binded to a concrete tool, it can make a manual and direct translation for models to code. And it supports, uh, it supports or, or profile supports, role-based access control features. And we have used this UML wide extension in the modeling of uh, our tool OLA for the Java 2 Enterprise Edition. Okay. I'm going to present the meta models, but first, uh, first of all, two, two main ideas about uh, UML with application extension. It defines nine main stereotypes for defining the structural components of web application, client page, server page, and four. Client page are something like HTML pages. Server pages are pages that have to be processed at the server side, such as servlets, and forms that uh, gathers the data that has to be sent from the user to the, to the server. We have navigational components, the name is very, it's very clear, link, submit, forward, related, and all presentational components for frame set. That this is very outdated today. So, taking into account this, this meta model, we have extended it. First, for Java server spaces, we can see here the stereotypes of the uh, Conalent UML way and those classes that are not stereotype are the new classes that we have defined. We have the, the, the UML way stereotypes, server page, redirection, page, game page, form, and link, and we have defined and, and submit and we have defined our, our new elements. Those for role-based access control, the GSF classifier that is something that can be the source of any type of link that you can find in Java server faces, these elements for template and template components, uh, these deep elements for elements inside of the classifier, and all the, the stuff about dynamic and static linking, the managed bin with actions, which are the, the actions that are invoked from the dynamic linking and the dynamic submit. And this action retrieves some or returns some type of outcome that guides access to uh, Java server page. Okay, this is a very simple uh, extension for the main elements of Java server faces. And we have said the same thing, we have done excuse me, the same thing for uh, ASP.NET model view controller. Uh, we have similar elements, those for role-based access control. Those for templates, which has a different name in ASP. ASP, and here the controller is the same that the managed bin, the action is an action. Here we have no static linking, we only have dynamic linking, so we have the action link, the action should meet, and uh, the action uh, does not return outcomes, but uh, the, the ASP server page. Okay. We have translated this high-level concept into specific elements of the stereotypes. And I'm going to review this because it's very straightforward and you have the details in the paper. 
we have done this translation both for uh, Java server faces and for uh, ASP.NET uh, model view controller, and it's very straight, straightforward. Uh, we can see that we have more elements in the Java server face uh, profile because Java server face is much more complex than, much more, than, a bit more complex than ASP.NET model view controller and have more navigation features that have to be identified. Well, how, where have we applied this? Uh, we have applied it to uh, uh, an e-learning application that we have developed that is called Oda Java 2 Enterprise Edition, which is the evolution of a previously uh, built application in our research group. And Oda Java 2 Enterprise Edition is an online learning of the repository designed in order to define and manage hybrid learning objects. What are uh, hybrid learning objects? Are objects uh, which metadata, metadata are dynamically built according to some definitions previously given by the structure. So we have to, to use a meta-relational model in order to support the new relational schema that we impose over any type of metadata. Well, in short, it's a complex enterprise application that uses a several uh, Java 2 Enterprise Edition framework, Java Server Faces for the presentation tire, Java Authentication and Authorization Service for the role-based access control, and Java Persistence API for the resource tire. And we can have, we can find uh, 100 Java Server Faces pages in the presentation. Okay, I'm going to, to, to explain, to briefly explain the use case that we have included included in the paper, that is a new relational schema for the metadata. Okay, Oda uses a template-based user interface. Oda has been built for Java 2 Enterprise Edition, and we have provided both models for Java server faces and also for ASP.NET model view control. Okay. In this page, the existing schemas are previously loaded, a new schema is defined, only the name, the new name is validated, and the use case ends uh, whether it is success or whether it will fail. And the role-based access control is implemented using JAS. Okay, this is a screenshot of Oda. So here is the new schema page. Here is where the user introduces the, the, new, the, new, the name of the new scheme. This is one of the most simple use cases in the whole application. And here we can see the list of previously defined schemes. Okay, how can we provide a design for this use case only for the presentation tile? And this is the, the use of our, uh, of our profile. Here we have the template structure, we have the default template with a header, a main content, and a filter. Header, main content, and there is the, the filter that is very, very small in this case. Here we have the role-based access control for the admin role for the pages of this use case. And what is the, the, the navigation, the structural navigation that we can find here? We have a static link to the outcome new schema, which guides access to the new schema page, we use a manage beam to load the previously defined schemas. Here we have the, the, the business logic element that guide access to any element of the business logic. You can use an application service, a business delegate, or whatever you want to, to put here implementing the, the business logic. Well, when the, pre, the, uh, the existing schemas are loaded, we can find a dynamic linking to the new schema. This is represented with the, the, the push of the new schema. And uh, this manage beam can return a success or a failure and access to the respective Java server faces pages and all of them use the same template structure. Okay, this is the, the true design for the true application. We have provided a design for the ASP.NET ODA that does not exist in code, that is an exercise of, of design only. And we can see that it is very similar 
But now, uh, instead of using managed bin, we have the schema controller that ISP.NET model view controller uses, and the actions that are invoked in order to, to load the previously defined uh, schemas and in order to validate the new, the new schema. Here we can see the difference how the managed bin return outcomes which get access to Java server spaces pages. While uh, ASP.NET model view controller directly return the, the penalties. Okay, just a brief conclusion. Okay, uh, our experience tells us that educational applications are becoming complex enterprise applications, so we need the machinery in order to model them. And we have defined UML4X that are a lightweight UML extension for GSA.NET model view controller. Lightweight because we have defined very, uh, very few stereotypes for uh, Java server spaces and ESP.NET. Uh, and they are very few you compare with IFML, which defines 75 stereotypes. So this is a very simple extension that allows us to use any multi and security pattern and models can be directly translated into code and provides role-based access control support. We have tested with our application or the Java Enterprise Edition. I have mentioned in the presentation the differences between these two frameworks. Uh, Java Server Faces is more complex and gives you the ability to define complex uh, navigation rules, while ASP.NET is much more simple. Future work, okay, the, the true, the main work, the principal work, the core of the work of Umberto is to define a platform independent meta model in order to provide a platform independent model for characterizing the presentation tire of enterprise application. Okay, so this is the, the work that we are finishing now, this platform independent <coughs> meta model. Uh, we want to make a technological movement from Borland together that we have used because uh, Borland together provided us an integrated platform for the development of our approach, but we want to move to open source framework because it seems that everyone is moving to our open source framework, and of course they are much more, they are less expensive. We want to define this is a very long term, this is an Umberto ideas, a uh, reverse engineering machinery in order to provide the models from code and. Uh, I think that we should focus on the modeling of additional Java server faces and ISP not the model view controller feature, or to provide uh, meta models for other frameworks such as Spring Model View Control. Okay, thank you very much for your attention.